and now the Mexican Attorney General's made his employees take it. They're pushing it on Alzheimer's patients. The point is, they brainwash the kids first. There's a bunch of government textbooks and others that admit their chemtrail spraying. Now, we found all the government documents where they admit they're already terraforming the atmosphere since 96. <gasps> Guess what? When we found out the term indirect and direct aerosol spray campaign, you just Google that, you'll be on Department of Energy, British Department of Energy, and I hate to have my guests waiting and then going off, and this is just too big. And then last few months, they had a London Guardian and AP come out and say, oh, they're looking at spraying barium salts, and they can mix it with the jet fuel. That way it's cheaply done, and, and it'll have a big effect over the airwaves to, to protect our cities. They're already doing it. <laughs> and NASA reports the planet is 20% darker than it was back in the early 90s. They are spraying. Then they turn into clouds. It's cloud seeding.
theory is that chemtrails are being used in conjunction with heart. By spraying metal oxides into the air above enemy skies, then directing ELF waves from HARP to heat those metal oxides, the temperature of the sky is raised to more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit, preventing the accumulation of water vapor that would otherwise form clouds and produce rainfall. The ELF waves HARP produces bounce off the ionosphere and are able to curve around the Earth over the horizon to the ground, making any point on the globe well within reach. One of the dangers in spreading chemtrails is that it acts as a desiccant and further dries the air. In other words, these chemical particulates can dry up the atmosphere and induce drought. Imagine the effects of chemtrails on the battlefield, causing extended droughts in enemy countries, drying up their resources, forcing surrender. Just as terrifying, is another form of weather being weaponized. Rain that can trigger devastating floods and wipe cities clean off the map. If you can make it rain, you can have a profound effect on the battlefield. One of the critical elements in launching a weatherized battle is being able to control rain and unleash floods. The military have had a keen interest in the weather basically since day one. There have been a number of times the military have actually succeeded in developing technology to use the weather. In history, there is a chilling example of a flood that may have been accidentally triggered with a weather weapon. August 15, 1952, near the small town of Lynmouth, England, a massive rainstorm strikes. The river swells. Scores die. It's estimated that 250 times as much rain fell in a period of 24 hours as normally fell in the entire month. The East Lynn and West Lynn rivers flood their banks. According to the BBC, 90 million tons of water sweep down into the town of Lynmouth. 35 people were killed. Bodies wash out to sea and are never found. Trees are uprooted, forming dams behind bridges, creating walls of water that carry huge boulders into the village, destroying shops, hotels, and homes. Was this just a freak act of nature? The prevailing theory is that it may have been a British military experiment gone bad, as they had been known to be conducting cloud seeding tests around that same time. The British military would be experimenting with uh, cloud seeding for the same reason as any uh, government or, or military. Because if you can control the weather, if you can make it rain, you can have a profound effect on the battlefield. Allegedly, early on the morning of August 15, 1952, some witnesses had reported seeing Royal Air Force jets flying in the area at times disappearing from sight high above the cloud deck. Were they on a routine training mission? Or as some people speculate, were they dumping payloads of silver iodide into the clouds? Silver iodide is one of the most common chemicals used for cloud seeding. It forces the tiny ice crystals that make up the cloud to fuse together. Once enough tiny ice crystals fuse together, they become heavy and fall to the earth in the form of rain. And on that fateful day in August of 1952, rain fell in record amounts. Did the Royal Air Force embark on daring cloud seeding experiments without the public's knowledge? Some people reported seeing uh, aircraft undertaking strange maneuvers, and it subsequently emerged that there was an uh, experiment codenamed Operation Cumulus, which was indeed an attempt at weather modification. Little over a decade later, the U.S. military conducted experiments to bring weather to the battlefield. 